In this video, I'm gonna start at the very beginning of using colored pencils. So some of the very basic tips and tricks that you can use when you're starting to learn how to use colored pencils. Um, so what I have here, I have some different colored pencils made by Blick Studios. And you can substitute other um, brands of colored pencils for this. You don't have to be using Blick Studios. This is what I have in my classroom right now. I'm also gonna show you that you can use um, certain erasers that are made for color pencils. This is the one that I'm using right now. And I also have a color pencil blender that looks like this. It's also made by Blick Studios. So I've just got a regular piece of drawing paper. I think this one's, I think it's 80 pound drawing paper. And I've got a folded up piece of paper. I like to use this to put my hand on so that I'm not introducing oils from my hands into the colored pencils when I'm shading. I wanna start by just talking about the different marks you can make with colored pencils. So one thing that we most people use is you just kind of color straight back and forth. This is called a back and forth stroke. If you color in circles like this, this is called scumbling. And you can also make marks that you've probably been making with pencil and that's hatching and you can do cross hatching and you can also apply color with stippling. So you can still apply all of those techniques that you use with graphite, you can do that with colored pencil also. So some of the things that I want to point out um, when you're coloring with colored pencil and you're just trying to get a layer of color down, there is wax in the colored pencils and the more color that you apply to the paper and the stronger that buildup of wax, the harder it is to layer on top. So if you're layering colors on top of each other, let's say I'm gonna use this red and then I'm gonna put an orange on top, you don't wanna to apply too much pressure at the beginning or it's gonna build up too much for you to be able to layer. So if you're layering two colors, you wanna go back and forth with the two colors like this until they're blended the way you want. So while I'm coloring, I'm gonna point out a few things to you. And in this area, I can start to see how there's little bits that are not filled in completely. It's good to have a sharpened pen point on your pencil so that you can go in and fill in these areas as you go. As you get heavier and heavier with your pressure and the color starts to get a little bit darker, um, that heavier pressure is actually called burnishing. So once you've burnished it, you probably can't apply too much color on top and there's different ways that you can burnish. So you can burnish by continuing to alternate with the colors that you're using and it could be three colors, it could be four colors, I'm using two right now. But eventually all of that application of color and pressure is going to burnish that area. So let's look at other ways you want to burnish. So if I'm, if I'm burnishing that way with the actual colors, it's hard to make a light value because by adding pressure, you're darkening the value. You can tell how this value appears lighter than this value. So if we want a light value, let's say I want to mix that same color, but I want a lighter value. We can use a white color pencil for our burnishing. So I'm alternating the same two colors, but now I'm gonna introduce white into it. Once you do this too, you wanna make sure that you fill in those little areas with your colored pencil first, because if you start burnishing with the white and you haven't filled in all the areas of your paper, that white is gonna kind of lock that in there so that it stays white. You really need a good sharpened point on your pencil to be able to do this. So I'm gonna start burnishing a little bit with my white colored pencil. It 
And so now I have the same color, but I'm able to have a tint of that color and still burnish it. Another way that you can burnish your color pencils is by using the color pencil blender. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So I've got the, I've got my red, I'm gonna add the orange on top. And I'm gonna use the color pencil blender to burnish it. This is a little bit different from using the white color pencil. It does darken the value just a little bit, so it's important to be aware of that. But these are all different ways that you can use to burnish your color pencils. So applying the same colors until you get that heavier pressure, using a white color pencil, or using the color pencil blender. And these are still very, very close. It's just easier to get a lighter value if you're using the whiter pencil or the white pencil. Something to be aware of, the color pencil blenders pick up a little bit of the color and it's deposited onto the end of the pencil. So if you're going to use the blender and it's been used recently with another color, you might wanna keep a scrap piece of paper to clean some of that off or sharpen the pencil so that you're not mixing a color that you don't want into the color that you're making. So a good way to practice using color pencils is to make a gradient. A gradient is when you have a color shift or a value shift from one side to another side. So you could do this by blending um, one color into another color. It could be an analogous color. You could blend two complements to each other to see what they look like when they cross and mix together. Um, you could even just make a gradient from a darker value of a color to the lighter value of that color. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a value gradient and I'm gonna do a complement gradient and to show you what I'm thinking about when I do it. So I'm gonna start by applying a little bit of the white color pencil and I'm not pressing hard because I do wanna be able to put the red on top of it. And I know you can't see what I'm doing but I'm just adding a little bit of white right here. And then I'm gonna start with the red on top of that. And I'm using a scumbling technique. So I'm coloring like in little ovals. And sometimes I even cross the ovals on top of each other, almost like cross hatching, but I'm still coloring in ovals. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm trying to remove any marks. You may want some visible marks. You may want to see some hatching marks if you're trying to create a certain kind of texture. But right now, I'm, what I'm going for is something smooth and blended. So I'm gonna use the point of my pencil to go in and try to fill in some of these holes where the pencil hasn't been able to touch the paper, these little valleys. You can rotate your pencil sometimes to get a good point. You may also need to sharpen it. Some artists use sandpaper to get a really, really fine point. And as I move to the right, I'm adding a little bit of pressure. I'm gonna go back and layer some of the white on top. And I'm gonna to try to fill in some of these areas before I burnish it. Now, as I'm moving this direction, I know that I want the value to get darker than what I have in my pencil color. So I want it to go, I want my value to be darker than this eventually. So I know I'm gonna to need to blend this with a darker value. I could blend it with black, but I think what I'm gonna do instead, because I think it'll be a richer color, is I'm gonna blend it with a 
it, the compliment, but a darker version of the compliment. So I've got this dark green. Green is the complementary color of red. It's opposite on the color wheel. I'm using very little pressure over here because I want some area with just straight red and then the green is going to start blending with it very lightly right here. And then as I move this direction, I'm going to press a little bit harder. And I'm going to go back and forth with these two colors at the end of this value scale. I don't want it to look green. I just want it to be a dark value. Almost like a black. And I might introduce the black at the very end of the gradient. So I feel like I'm mostly happy with the color. So at this point, I'm gonna start burnishing. I'm pressing harder, making sure I like this color that I've got over here. And I want the color to be completely right before I burnish. So I'm gonna use the color pencil blender to burnish this end. But I think I'm gonna go in with my red to burnish this area right here. And then I'll use the white for this side. At this point, I'm pressing pretty hard. Now I'm going to do a gradient that uses two complementary colors. So I'm going to use like an orange and a blue. I'm going to start on one side with the orange. And it's going to gradually move to the right. So this part of the gradient is just going to be orange. And when I burnish it, I'm going to let it be a bright orange. It's not going to be a tint orange, a tint of orange. It's just going to be straight orange. And then as I move to the right, I won't use as much pressure. So I'll use more pressure on this side. I'm gradually pressing a little bit harder. And as I move to the right hand side, I'm gonna gradually press a little bit lighter. In the middle, the blue and the orange are gonna cross over each other. And then on the right hand side, it's just gonna be blue. So I'm gonna start here and move to the left a little bit and gradually press lighter and lighter as I move to the left-hand side. And then as I move to the right, I'm gonna press a little bit harder and harder. And I'm gonna to wanna to make sure I fill in those little areas that, aren't, that don't have colored pencil in them before I burnish, especially where the colors are blending together. So I'm gonna go back and forth with the two colors a little bit before I burnish it. Sometimes in coloring in different directions helps you fill in areas.
where the pencil had a hard time getting into that part of the paper, one of those little valleys. So I try to color in different directions when I'm layering. And to clean it up here a little bit, I'm gonna use the colorless blender, the color pencil blender. Okay, so some things that I want you to be aware of that you may not be. When you are coloring with your color pencils, if you have drawn a point, like when you do your drawing before you color it, let's say you draw it with pencil. If you use a pencil that has a harder graphite, um, like B or HB or, or any of the H's, let's say you draw a line and it's not quite right and you end up erasing it later. And later on you're coloring. A lot of times it's really hard to get that colored pencil into that little valley that you've made in your paper with your pencil line. So be careful whenever you're doing your drawing not to use, um, I probably wouldn't use anything lighter than a 2B unless you're being very careful not to press too hard down, too hard into the paper. Don't use too much pressure. This can also happen if you have your final paper and for some reason you're drawing on top of it. So let's say, let's say I have a practice paper out here and it's just sitting on top of my final paper and I draw something on it like this. Later, when you're trying to color on your paper, you may see evidence of that. Now, you could use this to your advantage if you wanted to preserve an area and make it white on purpose or leave a color that you've, that you've made. Like, I can imagine this would be really good. Let's say if you were drawing a leaf and you wanted the the leaf veins in there like let's say let's say you drew a leaf let's say you color it yellow let's say you want the the veins of the leaf to be yellow i can imagine that if you were to put a piece of paper over top of it and draw in some of your veins And then you continue coloring, it would preserve that color and keep that texture for you. So you could use it to your advantage. But just be aware if you're drawing on top of your paper that that can happen. Um, other things that affect what you're doing, the type of paper is going to affect the way that the colors look when you color on top of it. Some paper is more textured than other papers. So that's something to be aware of. I wanna do one more gradient to show you what it would look like if you were to do a gradient of hatching and cross hatching. So I'm gonna do, do red and purple. So the same thing when you're hatching and cross hatching, you may not want to do too much pressure at the beginning and get build up too much wax on your paper that will resist the color that you're trying to put on top of it. You're going to want to add pressure slowly as you go, as you're layering. So hopefully that was um, an introduction to color pencils that was helpful to you, that helped you learn how to use the tools to blend and build some color, and that you can move on to some more advanced techniques and videos.